You know, there are lots of problems when you're starting out trying to build a brand, build a business. There's many people who've decided to become influencers, you know, self-employed, trailblazers, all that sort of stuff. Even if you look at the likes of people that were at the BBC for many years, people like, say, Emily Maitlis, who had a very good opportunity by interviewing His Royal Highness the Duke of York and having all that worldwide publicity. Good or bad interview, that remains to be seen. But the bottom line is she decided to go freelance and set up her own company. Naturally, it doesn't appear the millions of people that watch that particular interview have decided to follow her. But that is the risk you take, isn't it? Now, this is the bigger problem, as many people are now realising, and inside the inner circle of Harry and Meghan. Let me explain. Good morning, Neil Sean here. Nice to see you as ever. And thank you so much. Let's have a quick wave today. Yes, people behind me obsessed. Uh, with the British telephone boxes. This one doesn't work, sadly, but I think they leave them up just because, as I've said before, people like to get a picture of them. It says Britain, doesn't it? Great Britain. And, um, you know, nothing wrong with that. I love the fact they're really shocked when they go in and they say, oh, there's no phone. You think, really? Do you want to use the phone? <laughs> you got any money? Does it take cash? These are the problems we have, aren't they? <laughs> I know. It's daft, isn't it? By the way, did you know this? In 1872, a very world-famous store, we're not talking about Harrods over here, or indeed Selfridges, but the brilliant Bloomingdale's in New York City started business as a penny sort of bizarre type thing, escalated a few years later to the uh, area that everybody loves and knows. There are certain stores, aren't they, around the world that everybody knows. Harrods, Bloomingdale's, Macy's. What's yours in your part of your world? What was the big one, say, New Zealand or Canada, uh, you know, Australia? I'd love to know because obviously there must have been those big ones. There were smaller ones as well over here. We had Wycliffe's in West London. Sadly, that's now going to be flats. They're keeping the outer shell. It's like everything, isn't it? Back as ever to your breaking roll story of the day. What's interesting here is, you know, you can't stop negative PR as Harry and Meghan are now truly finding out. And the bigger problem that you have with that is when you've had a mega deal, you know, something that's been worth millions of pounds for that particular company, then of course, you know, the bottom line is people are going to hit out because they've lost so much money. As Meghan Markle found after producing just a mere 12 episodes of that Spotify podcast, according to the CEO of Spotify, Daniel Eck, well, it's not really, you know, what the public wanted. Now, this is going to be a huge problem for Megan and the William Morris Endeavour Agency. You can't stop a brand like Spotify hitting out. Yes, they were foolish to give them the money, but of course, as Megan's in a team have pointed out, no one put a gun to their head to say, we're going to give you this. Nobody suggested at any point that they were unhappy with the association only once the product was delivered. And as I told you before, Spotify were really keen on the fact that they truly only wanted, really, Prince Harry to be involved. Who was Meghan Markle to the audience? Just a former actress. Once Harry decided it was going to be Meghan's project, then the bottom line is people simply lost interest. Each time a member of Spotify comes out and calls them grifters, talentless, you know, audio imbeciles, all that sort of stuff, then of course it damages the brand even further. This is going to be very problematic for William Morris Endeavour and more importantly for Meghan moving forward. You can shut people down as you tried to with the Harlem School, but you simply can't shut down a mega business. And this is going to be even more damaging, many people believe, than her father, Thomas Markle, who's always ready at any point to give an interview to say how he has been ostracised. It is truly a worrying developing story for Meghan and Harry over in Montecito. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.